Hi, John. Hello. I, this is a real honor, Anson, um, to talk to the captain of the Enterprise. I have to say, uh, this is great. Oh, thanks. It's an honor here as well. Um, I love the show. I honestly, it is like the Star Trek show I've been waiting for since the '90s. It is Star Trek. You don't even need Strange New Worlds. Um, so, um, so is this also the show? Your show is 56 years in the making, and it really feels like the original series in a lot of ways. Um, why do you think now is the right time for classic Trek's new frontier kind of optimism? Yeah, we often joke that it, it's, uh, in many ways, it's the longest pilot to series pickup break <laughs> in history. <laughs> um, uh, and, it, and it feels, there, there's an extra added sense of joy and being able to share it with the world because of that. Um, and I'm sorry, the second part of your question was? Oh, why do, why do you think now is the right time for this type of, like, this optimism, you, your, your show's brand of, like, New Frontier-style Star Trek? I mean, I, 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 maybe it's a misplaced sense of nostalgia or me getting older, but I, I honestly think that in my lifetime, there hasn't been more of a need for something optimistic and forward looking and has a built in intrinsic faith in human exploration and human good. Uh, it, it's a, it's such an important time that we have something like that uh, on our TV every week. Uh, I mean, and we, we, we don't back away from it. I think that you'll see we uh, we tackle that head on in the, in the first episode. I'm very happy with the the network and uh, our leadership at uh, Secret Hideout and Roddenberry Entertainment. They let us go there because uh, I think that um, I think Star Trek has something to say uh, to the world about. Um, about that that funny little thing in us that wants to walk beyond the campfire light and find out what's out there in the dark woods. Absolutely. Um, so Captain Pike knows his future also. He knows he's going to end up in that wheelchair at some point. How is he facing that knowledge uh, on the show? It, does he feel like he's living on borrowed time? No. I think that um, I think the crux of the existential crisis is not necessarily about his time left on the planet as much as it is about his ability to function as a captain. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and well, there is a, there is a identity crisis within that as well, right? Cause if he's not mm -hmm. a captain, what is he? What's he going to be? Who is he? He's dedicated his entire life to this. So I think the writers have done a very good job in tackling that question head on and making it a part of the development of the first season. And so also, we know all about Kirk's friendship with Spock. What makes Pike's relationship with Spock different on this show? Well, it's a younger Spock, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I have a, I've been blessed with uh, uh, this great friendship that I've developed with Ethan Peck. I think he's a tremendous young man, and he is much further along in his development as a man than I was at his age. Uh, he has damn good parents and good teachers. And um, it's, been a, it's been a joy to spend time with him and get to know him more and bring that into the relationship of Pike and Spock. I love the show. I think it's fantastic. Um, I cannot wait to see the rest of the, of the season. And thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate that. It means a lot.